Hello everyone, welcome back to Administrative Office Procedure and Management and we are now in our week 11 which is the last week before uh, midterms. Okay, so I hope you are done with your modules, I mean your requirements para nang sa ganon makapag-exam kayo ng walang aberya. Walang aberya, parang biyahe lang, no? Okay, so before we move on, please have with you your module so that you will have a guide with the discussion that we're going to have in this video. So, ayan, I hope you have your modules with you. So, our topic for this video or for this week is all about managing human resources. So, we're done. We are done with um, yung office design, yung management of your office environment, which was um, the lesson for week 9 and 10. Okay, so week 9 and 10 is all about managing the work um, area or yung office space or yung, yeah, yung office space or yung office. Paano mo siya i-manage? Paano mo siya i plan So, we're done with that. So, now, we're going to talk about yung human resources naman. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng human resources? So, when you say human resources, this pertains to your workforce, okay? Human, di ba? Human, mga tao, resources mo ng tao. So, saan mo ba makukuha ang human resources? O, oh, syempre, yung mga, ano, yung mga ihahire mo na tao, yun yung mga human resources mo, okay? So, paano mo sila imamanage? <clears throat> Um, before we move to that, uh, yung first part ng module niyo sabi, managing human resources. Much of an organization's success is attributed to the quality of its workforce. Making significant contributions to this area is the employee selection program used by the organization. Effective, well-designed programs generally yield better results than the counterparts. Human resources, training and labor relations managers... And specialists provide this connection. Okay, so, paano ba, ano ba yung tool na gagamitin mo when you're going to hire employee? Ano ba yung kailangan mo na personality ng isang employee? So, dapat yun lahat, um, kumbaga, when you're going to choose your workforce or, or when you're going to, um, kumbaga, yung, yung, yeah, yung workforce mo, kung kukuha ka ng human resources mo, you have to make sure that you choose them properly according to yung kung ano ang kailangan ng business and of course, their personalities. Kaya, meron tayong tinatawag na screening. Okay? Hindi ka lang mag... Kumbaga, hindi ka lang um, mag... Uh, re rely dun sa mga isasubmit nila na document. So, let's say, for example, oo, matalino siya. Valedictorian, cum laude, uh, um, board passer, lahat na sa kanya. Pero, ngayon, ang, ang kulang naman niya is yung, yung socializing skill or, or hindi siya yung taong um, team player. Hindi siya marunong makisama. So, gugustuhin mo ba yung ganon, yung, yung matalino nga pero hindi naman siya marunong makisama or yung marunong makisama pero hindi siya ganon katalino. So, it's up to you, okay? It's up to you as managers, okay? So, before we move on, ayan, bago pa tayo magpatuloy yung sa talakan na ito, um, mag, ano ulit tayo, mag, um, kumbaga, i- Let's wear the shoes of the managers. So, kung bagay set muna natin yung utak natin na, oh, sa discussion na to, I am the manager, I am the owner of the business, and I am the one who is going to source out or kukuha or magha-hire ng mga tao for my workforce. So, um, in this um, module, um, ha, um, i-discuss dito how will you be able to select and orient yung office employees na kakailanganin mo para sa workforce mo. So, um, where can you source or saan ka pwedeng makakuha ng potential na employee? First is your internal resources or internal sources. It is better to promote an employee who meets the requirements of the position. Employee referral, when this is used Employee recommend individual or open position within the organization. Referrals give employees a feeling of recognition or it may cause 
problems if the individual referred does not perform satisfactory. Number two, employee promotion. Morale is likely to increase and turnover decrease when employees can be promoted. And then data banks. The information regarding employees' job qualification is stored in a computerized data banks. This can be easily and quickly screened to determine which employee are, are presently qualified for the open position. So, ano yung ibig sabihin when you say internal sources? Uso ito ngayon dun sa mga, um, tawag dito, LGUs, mga government offices. So, kapag kami nag-open na item and then meron silang mga job orders, kahit na iaano nila yan, kahit na ia-advertise nila, kasi di ba, ano yan, may, post, may posting kasi kailangan nilang i-post publicly yung opening na yan. Kahit na may posting na tinatawag, kapag ka meron silang job order within yung, or kung meron silang job order sa organization na yan, 100% sure na as long as this employee or this job order um, employee is qualified for that position, sa kanya at sa kanya ibibigay yung position. So, yun yung tinatawag nilang internal sources. Kung sino na yung nandun sa loob, sila na yung pagpipilian mo as long as um, qualified sila. Okay, yun naman yung yun naman yung ano doon, as long as qualified sila. Pero sometimes kasi nakukuha when especially when it comes to LGUs ganyan, nakukuha talaga siya sa political um political power minsan. Na kahit hindi naman qualified yung tao uh, dahil sa malakas yung kapit, siya na yung nakukuha. Let's not be ano, hypocrites. <laughs> hindi naman sa hypocrites. Pero di ba, that's the truth. Wag na nating um sugar coat pa, that's the truth. But um, dito sa pinag-aaralan kasi natin, you are the manager, right? So, you are the manager. So, you are given the, um, the kumbaga, um, privilege na, ayan, na mag-promote ng tao. As long as, yun nga, yung, yung tao mo is um, qualified dun sa position na bakante or dun sa position na nabuksan. So, when you say internal sources, nagtratrabaho na siya dati pa and then, um, siya yung ilalagay mo dun sa position. Kung baga, she's already, um, she has already been a part of the organization. Kung baga, i-promote mo na lang siya. Ganon. And then, of course, yung nabakantehan na, na, na position niya, yun na yung ma, um, malalagyan. Okay, syempre, kakailanganin mo pa rin naman ng tao kung saan, um, na, na mag-sit in or kailangan mo ng tao na, papalit sa kanya dun sa posisyon na iniwanan niya or dun sa mga trabaho na iiwan niya kasi nga ba mag-iiba na siya ng posisyon. So, ano ba yung kagandahan nito? Of course, yun napapataas mo yung moral ng mga empleyado mo. Na um, it's very rewarding kasi when you get a promotion, di ba? Diba? That's something to be proud of. Kung baga, feeling mo, wow, um, nare-recognize ako. Kasi nakikita nila yung effort ko, kaya ako promote. And of course, because of that, lahat na yung employees mo mag-e-effort na because they also want to get promoted. So, yung nakita ninyo, tumataas yung moral ng mga empleyado kapag ka nag-internal source or sa internal source ka kumakuha ng mga um, ilalagay mo sa mga position na bubuksan mo. So, for example, nag-promote ka, ganyan. Um, that is what you call um, internal source. And another benefit of that is that, syempre, yung, yung empleyado mo kasi na dati na, gamay na niya yung um, kumbaga gamay na niya yung uh, ang tawag dito familiar na siya doon sa environment ng trabaho familiar na siya doon sa mga co-workers niya so hindi ka mahihirapan yung tinatawag nila na turnover wherein kailangan mo ulit i-train kailangan ulit ng time to adapt yung yung empleyado so hindi mo na siya magiging ganun ka productive pero kapag ka internal source kasi uh, sanay na siya sa, sa um, environment ng trabaho sanay na siya sa mga tao so wala siyang magiging problema hindi na niya kaya kailanganin ng time to adapt dun sa mga co-workers niya, time to adapt dun sa office, okay, so um, kumbaga magiging smooth lang yung ano yung pagta-turn over ng trabaho. And of course, kailangan din niya ng, ng training or something like that, pero hindi na siya magiging ganun kahirap kasi nga hindi siya zero knowledge dun sa process na ginagawa ng company or ginagawa ng business kasi nga dati na siya na nandun. Okay, so yun naman yung kagandahan. Um, pero yung sabi nga dito, um, 
Ayun sabi doon, may nabasa ako din. It may cause problems if the individual referred does not perform satisfactory. So what do you need to do? What you must what what do you need to do as a manager or as a um uh, owner of the business? You have to make sure that the person you are going to um uh tawag dito promote is of course qualified and kaya talaga niyang gawin yung mga trabaho na na nakalakip nung posisyon. So, paano, nang, paano nagagawa yan? Of course, due to observation, kapag ka ikaw naman yung manager or kung ikaw yung supervisor, of course, kailangan mong i-observe din yung trabaho ng mga empleyado mo. Hindi basta nag-hire ka na, iwan mo na sila, bahala na sila dyan na gawin kung ano yung mga trabaho nila. So, of course not. You also have to, syempre, tignan mo rin kung sino yung nag effort sino yung, yung tama ganyan. Of course, kung sino yung nag-effort at saka kung sino yung talagang um, uh, anong tawag dito? Um, sino yung talagang uh, qualified para dun sa posisyon. Dapat yun yung piliin mo. Para nang sa ganun, hindi ka magkaroon ng problema. Okay? So, next we have external sources. The advantage of external sources is that there will be big poten potential applicant pool with new ideas to join in the organization. The advantage is the possibility of getting or hiring mediocre to unsatisfactory employee due to a large number of applicants for just one opening. So, when you say external sources naman, ipapublicate, ipapublic mo yung hiring. And of course, um, uh, yung mga applicants mo from the outside na nung, nung business. So, from the outside, magkakaroon ka ng maraming pagpipilihan. Pero, yun nga yung sabi, uh, yung disadvantage, because you have many choices. At the ko na, nga pili-pili, makaala ko gangi ko na, na diba? So, ganun yun. Kapag ka marami kang um, choices, there's a big possibility also na yung hindi tamang empleyado ang um, mapipili mo. So, yun yung uh, downside naman ng external source. So, next, unsolicited applicants. Ano yung unsolicited applicants? This is used to apply for a position without knowing whether an opening actually exists. Individuals using this method may apply either in personal or by mail. Advertising. As a recruiting source, advertising includes classified newspapers, advertisements, magazines and journals, radio, television notices, electronic bulletin boards found on the internet educational institution placement services provide important services to both employees and the job seekers the disadvantage is that some organization may recruit only limited number of colleges or universities public employment agencies and private employment agencies these agencies help employers design testing programs job analysis and evaluation and then well-based employment services using the web the job seekers registers with the employment service and electronically submits resume type information. So, ano yung sinasabi ng unsolicited application? Kung baga, um, nakap nakapag ano na ba kayo dun sa mga, uh, ano na yung mga websites, outsourcing sites? Di ba may mga ganon yung trabaho.ph? Yung mga ganun na type ng websites wherein you're going to apply, you're going to post, kumbaga, gagawa ka ng portfolio mo on online, and then kung may nak, nag, um, kung may nakagusto dun sa kung ano man yung laman ng portfolio mo, iha-hire ka. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng unsolicited. Kumbaga, wala namang opening, pero nag apply ka kasi. And then, yun yung isang, um, kumbaga, source ng mga yun yung naging isang source ng mga um, employers. Kung saan dun sila nagahanap na ng mga employees na, kumbaga, prospect nila na employees. Kasi nga, nandun na yung portfolio nila, nakalahat naman dun lahat ng mga experience nila and everything. So, dun na sila kumukuha ng mga applicants. So, usong-uso yan ngayon dun sa mga outsourcing na mga trabaho. Hindi lang naman dun sa mga outsourcing, pero sabi nga dyan, pwede kang pumunta sa isang um, like here in the school. Everyone is um oh it's open for everyone to come and apply. Kahit na walang napo-post na 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 tawag dito, na opening ang school na nag-accept ng school ng nag-accept ang school ng um ng instructors or nangangailangan ng school ng instructors. So do walang ganun na ano na advertisement, 
pwede pa rin and open pa rin na yung mga gustong mag-apply, pumunta dito at mag-submit ng kanilang resume and then mag-iwan ng kanilang contact number para nang sa ganun, just in case na mga ilangan, diba, just in case na mga ilangan, um, nakapila na yung pangalan. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng unsolicited applicants. Kung baga, hindi ka naman nag-ask, pero meron, meron at meron na nag-apply. Next, outsourcing. Organization turn over certain of its functions to any outside agency that has the specialization of recruiting, selecting, and hiring employees. It is also common to outsource janitorial, security, payroll, processing, food service, and office service, and etc. So, ano yung ibig sabihin ng outsourcing? Kung bago yung trabaho na iba, binibigay mo na sa ibang um, nagi specialize. So, for example, um, janitorial. Janitorial service, di ba? Meron na kasi yung mga company na talagang janitorial service ang in-offer nila. So, you as a manager, instead of hiring uh, um, two to three na, ano, na, na janitor for your whole building, ano yung gagawin? Mag-outsource ka na lang. Yung company mismo na yun na ang magiging, ano mo, magkakaroon na kayo ng memorandum of agreement wherein, sila magbibigay sila ng cleaning service sa sa building mo uh, every um, thrice a week ganun tas babayaran mo na lang sila yun yung tinatawag nila na outsourcing i think one of the best example of this is yung mga um, uh, event planners di ba yung mga event planners hindi naman necessarily na when you say you're an event planner, ikaw yung magluluto, ikaw yung maghahanda ng damit, ikaw yung gagawa ng damit, di ba? Hindi. So, ano yung ginagawa ng mga, um, ng mga um, event planners? So, for example, it's a wedding. Doon sa wedding, merong kain, di ba? Merong pakain, merong gowns, ano pa, may reception, ganyan. So, may cake. Ano yung ginagawa nila? nag outsource sila, humahanap sila ng mga pwedeng partners nila na gagawa ng mga um, trabaho na yon So, ano yung gagawin na lang nila? They will be the one who's gonna manage yung yung time frame kung, pen, kung kailan at kung, kung saan dadalhin yung mga um, in-outsource niya na mga bagay-bagay. So, for example, um, instead na siya yung magluto, ibibigay na lang niya kay Emilias. Si Emilias na lang yung magpre-prepare ng pagkain. Okay? Instead ulit na gagawa siya ng damit, um, ikokontak na lang niya si, sino ba yung mga bridal shops dito. Magkukontak na lang siya ng bridal shop na magpro-provide ng damit. And then, dun sa cake, ganun din, magkukontak na lang siya. So, that's outsourcing. Kung baga, nag, um, binibigay mo sa ibang tao or ibang agency yung trabaho para sila na yung gumawa. O magbabayad ka na lang. And then, of course, we have hiring people with disabilities. Employers cannot discriminate against the individual, against an individual with, against an individual with disability as long as a person is otherwise qualified for the job. So, marami tayong nakikita like um, yung may mga cliff pale, ganyan. Hindi naman problema yun ni, eh, di ba? Hindi naman problema na ano hindi naman hadlang sa trabaho, hindi naman sa hindi sila makakatrabaho dahil doon sa disabilities nila. Marami din tayong mga um, something like yung may mga autism, yung mga autistic na mga tao, uh, I, I do not I don't have anything against it ha, pero yun nga yung sinasabi ko. I'm just trying to explain na yung may mga autism na ano, yung mga nasa autistic side na may mga um tawag dito nagha-hire sa kanila. May nagha-hire pa rin sa kanila kahit na special yung yung um, ano nila yung yung condition nila. Bakit? It's because nakakapagtrabaho naman kasi sila. Nagagawa pa rin naman kasi nila yung trabaho nila. And uh, and also kapag ka kasi when you say autism um ano, ano ba yung term nila doon? Yung parang kung saan sila magadling, sobrang galing nila dun sa ano na yon, dun sa field na yon. So, for example, kung magaling yung isang autistic na magplay ng piano or kapag ka music in, musically inclined yung isang autistic na tao, grabing talino niya sa music. So, yun yung ibig ko sabihin. So, for example, if that autistic person is um, gifted with um, the gift of filing, let's say filing or, or making reports or painting and that is what you need, then walang hadlang para hindi mo sila i-hire, ba? So, um, 
you should not discriminate so you you must put it in mind as future managers as future business owners as future supervisors you must put it in your mind that you are not to discriminate um, people with disability as long as they can do the job well okay so ayan next interview and resume preferences um Competition is stiff with so many applicants to choose from. Employers use a variety of methods for narrowing the fields. Uh, field. The following methods are listed down. So first, is scanning resources. And yung scanning resources, almost all the recruiters reviewed resort to eye scanning a resume, skimming it to find a keyword related to the position and power words that indicate the applicant is capable and hardworking. Works like adaptable, innovative, innovative, I'm sorry, problem solving and skills like oral communication ability to dialect, to delegate. A one page resume is preferable since managers is always in a hurry to finish everything at on his table. So ano yung scanning resources. Ito yung isang technique na ginagamit ng mga magre recruit, ng mga managers, ng mga HR department. Kumbaga um, they read through hindi yung in toto na babasahin pa isa-isa no ha maghahanap lang sila kung baga agbirok dala ang iti keywords doon sa resume mo and that's it kung wala kang ganun you're out kung nakita nila doon sa resume mo yun then you're in so that is why um that's another uh, kung baga that's a technique they use kasi syempre diba pag nag-open ka kasi ng, ng tawag dito ng Mm, job, job opening, and dami, and magkakaroon ng flooding, flooding ng mga resume. So, you won't be able, you as a manager, or you as the responsible for recruiting, you won't have enough time to read through all of those. So, that is why may mga technique na ginagawa na ngayon ang mga recruiting agency. So, for example, minsan, dinadaan na lang din nila sa face value, ganyan. Totoo yun, di ba? Di naman especially if it's for sales lady or something like that where in they need you to 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 be the frontliner so you have to be beautiful of course yun yung number one na titignan nila you have to be beautiful you have to be handsome and then susunod na lang um, out of those na pin, napili ni na pili nila kapag ka na narrow down na nila yung choices tsaka na lang nila ire-review yung mga references ganyan or yung mga referrals ganyan or yung yung kanilang iba pang ano naka-attach na mga documents. So, ayan. Next, we have the interview. Employers now often try to reduce the list of candidates further by conducting telephone interviews. They note the applicant's ability to discuss, educate, job history, and um, education, job history, and current interest on the telephone. Those who cannot remember specifics are not invited for a formal interview. Neither are those who sound sleepy at 10 a.m., the telephone interview may also screen out applicants with accent. Okay, so, um, ayan, yung sabi nga kanina, na, na narrow down mo na yung choices mo because of yung, yung um, skipping off or yung skimming through um, the, the application letters. Now, susunod is the telephone interview. So, with the telephone interview, dun naman nila ma, um, kumbaga, isang tool ulit yun to lessen or to narrow down ulit yung mga um, napili mo sa sa mga resume. Basing on the resume and then magkakaroon ng telephone interview and then mag slash na naman sila para nang sa ganun, dun sa one-on-one -on -one interview, konti na lang yung time na kakailanganin. And of course, konti na lang yung taong i-interview nila. So, ayan. Next, supervising office employees. Supervision. What is supervision? It is the managing others through leadership and personal influence. Management means simply getting things done, not necessarily true coordination of the efforts of other people. Thus, an individual can be a good manager even without dealing with other people. A supervisor, however, exercises hands-on influence and leadership skills to guide others. Effective supervisors share many qualities, including the ability to maintain distance from their employees without losing awareness of their activities, yet still caring about 
their productiveness and well-being. Similarly, effective supervisors discharge their duties effectively, productivity rises, and employees enjoy greater job satisfaction. So, um, what are the roles and functions of a supervisor? One, supervisor as communicator. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Supervisors are required to communicate with a variety of personnel in their course of job. Approaches that might improve the productivity of people in their 20s, for example, are not generally applicable to people in their 50s. Similarly, supervisors must deal with people with a wide range of personality styles regardless of their ages and backgrounds supervisors must be able to write and speak concisely clearly consistently and courteously with senior managers production workers customers suppliers and other people who have an interest in the organization's activities it is the supervisor's responsibility to start the upward communication process to inform middle and senior managers about production problems, adherence to production schedules, budget variance and variances, and other matters. Furthermore, supervisors must be able to react to downward communications from senior managers in order to address problems as quickly and effectively as possible. A large part of a supervisor's time is spent communicating. So, supervisors must be a communicator. Okay, so ano ibig sabihin nun? Kasi nga, yung supervisor is, kumbaga siya yung middleman between the managers and then yung mga employees. So, kumbaga nasa pagitan siya, nasa, siya yung middleman. So, um, uh, let's say, hindi naman sa, ano no, pero kasi, um, sa mga tao, when dealing with people, when communicating with people, maaring yung, yung the way you communicate it, naiintindihan ng isa, pero yung isa hindi. So, yun yung trabaho ng supervisor as communicator. Um, supervisors must be able to communicate or to 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 yeah to communicate to people of different ages dapat marami silang alam, alam na approach dapat yung ganun yung hindi lang iisang approach yung yung the way they talk to other people kasi di ba for example your way of talking to the higher ups or the higher people in the like the board of directors yung president yung vice president the way you talk to them is not how you're going to talk to the clergy people or yung yung mga tao na nasa let's say it's a manufacturing business so yung the way you as a supervisor um yung kumbaga yung level of professionalism mo when it comes to talking with um the the super i tawag dito talking with the managers or talking with the board of directors ganyan the president and the vice president hindi naman yun yung way of talking mo dun sa mga tauhan mo na nasa baba mo. For example, sabi ko nga, manufacturing. Alangan naman na yung mga laborers, kung paano ka nakipag-usap kay president, ganun din yung gagawin mong pakikipag-usap sa mga laborers mo. Of course, hindi. Kasi nga, hindi nila yun maiintindihan. Usually din, di ba, yung mga laborers naman natin are, are those who are not um, mga high school graduate. Ganyan. Sila yung mga usually na laborers. So, Kung, kung gagamitin mo yung the way na pakikipag-usap mo dun sa president or dun sa mga board of directors, pwedeng maging masama yung impact nun dun sa mga trabahador. Okay? So, supervisors must be good communicators or they should be communicators. And then, supervisors as trainers. Trainers. Um, when you say supervisor as trainer, ito naman yung, yung supervisor dapat... Um, Best example of this is dun sa mga call centers. Usually, di ba, yung mga supervisors ng call centers, kung titignan mo, they started as call center agents also. So, nag-call center agents sila for how many years and then slowly they went up until they are supervisors already. So, paano nangyayari yun? Siyempre, nakikita kasi nung, nung 
nung previous na supervisor na o oh, ito ganito yung development nito may potential to so saka siya naging um, supervisor okay what i'm trying to say here is that napagdaanan na niya lahat yan napagdaanan na niya yung hirap ng night shift napagdaanan na niya yung maka maka encounter ng client na bastos na encounter na niya yung makapag uh, ay na yan encounter na niya yung maka ano ng client na na maarte ganyan and he was able to or he or she was able to deal with it so when you say supervisor as trainer na pagdaanan na kasi niya niya kaya alam niya kung paano niya ituturo or paano din niya itretrain yung mga nasa baba niya so usually ang mga supervisors hindi basta biglang so oh, boom supervisor ka na hindi usually yan nanggagaling din sila sa baba and then unti-unti silang tumataas or nag step up until they were supervisors. So, alam natin na since napagdaanan nila, alam nila kung paano nila ituturo or paano nila itretrain, paano nila isashare. So, yung mga supervisors, they are good trainers. Okay? And then, supervisor as a student. Supervisor, life is a learning process. Not only must they learn the ru rudiments, of their subordinates job but they must also learn basic supervisory skills they must take courses in management computers communication and other skills that will help them in their supervisory role if they do not continually update their skills they will fail as supervisors which is something neither they do not i uh, they nor their organization neither they nor their organization can afford. So, supervisors as students. So, sabi nga dyan, it's a never-ending process. Learning is a never-ending process. So, is it with supervisors. So, mga supervisors, hindi dapat stagnant yung mga trainings and seminars and education na, na ina-undergo nila. Dapat continually, continuous yan. May seminars, may trainings, ganyan. May mga updates. Dapat um, continuous na uh, they are a student. Para nang sa ganun, ma-update yung skills nila na kailangan para maging um, produ productive, maging effective na supervisor. And then, supervisor as goal setters. Supervisors are responsible for setting goals for themselves and their subordinates. In addition, they are charged with ensuring that unit and individual goals set by senior management are met. They must sit down with their subordinates and work together to set goals and monitor progress. This function requires full employment of the supervisor's communication skills. So, when you say goal setters, sila yung nagsaset ng goals. Or sila yung nagsaset ng mga milestones na kailangan na, um, kumbaga, nag, sila yung nagsaset ng time frame. So, ito yung goal dapat ganito, this time matapos na natin itong A, this time matapos na natin yung B, this time matapos na natin yung C, para nang sa ganon, ganito, ganito. So, dun pumapasok yung ability to communicate pagka nag-set ka ng goal as a supervisor. And then, supervisor as an evaluator. Of course, since ikaw yung supervisor, dapat um, ino-observe mo ng maigi yung mga empleyado mo nang sa ganun, alam mo kung ano ang evaluation, kung paano mo sila i-evaluate yung mga empleyado mo. Kailangan i-evaluate mo sila para nang sa ganun, makikita mo kung sino yung kailangan ng improvement, sino yung kailangan ng training, sino yung, sino yung dapat i-promote, ganyan. So, supervisors are responsible for um, the development ng kanyang mga subordinates or yung mga employees below him. And then, supervisor as human resource specialist. So, since you are the supervisor, of course, alam mo kung anong klase ng tao ang kailangan mo for that particular na trabaho na open. So, you are going to be the one who's going to, kumbaga, mang ikuto ba? Ikutuam yung kukudin ninyo na, um, na empleyado. Next, supervisor as computer experts. So, that's a given. Supervisor as producers. Ano ba yung mga produce ng, ng supervisor? The producer is inextricably linked to the production of goods and services. First, supervisors must be knowledgeable about the production process they control. They are responsible for a large variety of stimulating simultaneous activities in the ongoing production process. For example, to a large extent, they control the production schedule. Supervisors are invariably involved 
in the planning design project staffing employment training simplification of work methods maintenance of equipment and organization of tasks and activities while striving to keep relations with workers as amicable as possible while performing this task supervisor must keep the object or meeting organizational or corporate goals in the forefront so ayan nabasa naman natin <laughs> advisors as advisor supervisor must be particularly effective in an advisory role supervisors who can advise senior managers middle managers and subordinates on topics that affects their work activities are valuable the problem is to restrict advice only to those areas directly related to individuals needs as a particular time more often than not the supervisor does not provide detailed advice on particular issues generally the supervisor's role is to point employees toward qualified professionals who can be of assistance that in itself required that supervisors be aware of where the proper professionals can be found so yan okay next idea champion when you say idea champion supervisors diba sabi nga kanina they have to be always um kumbaga updates their skills update their knowledge so since kanayon or palagi ang update nila they are supposed to be an idea bank kung saan um, given a circumstance they always have new ideas to share new ideas new solution new um Ayan, mga innovations. So, that is why supervisors are um, idea champions. And then, supervisor as an environmental watchdog. So, bantay, di ba? Di ba kapag ka, sinabi kasi nating supervisor is, kumbaga, feeling natin palagi silang nakakita, kinikita, ayun tawag dito, ino-observe, palaging nag-observe. So, that is why it is called a watchdog. Kumbaga, they, sabi nga, di ba, they have to be observant. Diba? They have to be observant since, since they are evaluators. Kailangan nilang nakaabang, nakaki, nakatingin palagi, nakaobserve palagi. Nang sa ganun, alam nila kung ano yung nangyayari, kung sino ang sino ang sino dun sa mga empleyado. Okay? And then, supervisor as an internal manager. The emergence of large international businesses is creating a new demand for supervisors who can manage effectively in difficult circumstances. Contemporary supervisors are well advised to learn new languages and become aware of cultural differences among workers. They must um, learn international trade laws and regulations and the differences in reward and punishment systems. They have to learn how to motivate workers in different countries and differentiate between what is ethical and legal in one country but not in another. There is no doubt that acquiring the knowledge and experience to supervise an international business is placing even more pressure on managers but it is also opening new opportunities for supervisors okay so the new challenge for supervisors the future holds much potential for supervisors they have long been an important part of the business world it would be impossible to conduct business on any scale wherein were it not for the presence of qualified supervisors who can lead production workers workers Supervisors function as leaders, trainers, goal setters, environmental watchdog, facilitators, communicators, and more. Simply put, they are the backbone of the business world and will continue to be as long as there is business to conduct. So, ayan. And then, skills of an effective supervisor. According to Mona Jansen, the owner of companies, especially large companies she does not have the time to supervise each and every employee who works for them she hires supervisors to ensure that the employees are using company time productively and effectively the employees will follow the lead of this their supervisor and it and it the skills the supervisor have are effective it will show in the department's overall performance so ayan ano yung sinabi doon uh, so, ano yung pwedeng sabihin natin na kailangan na skill ng uh, isang effective na supervisor? Of course, dapat uh, he's a good leader. He's a good follower. 
um, he's an effective communicator. Nandiyan naman lahat, di ba, yung 1 to 12 na yun. Dapat nasa kanya lahat yung skill na yun. Para nang sa ganun, maging effective siya in, in his job. So, ayan. I think that's the end of our um, discussion. So, that's the end for uh, midterm. So, I hope I was able to help you understand kung ano yung nasa inyong module. Um, para sa inyong magiging activity, yan sabi dyan, make a flyer. Or poster making. Uh, yan, magagawa kayo ng poster making for a hiring. For, um, so, parang kayo yung magiging um, HR. Kayo yung mag-hire. So, you have to design your banner. You have to design your posters. Okay? So, that's it everyone. Um, thank you for listening and watching this video. I hope to see you in our next video. Good day and God bless.